Hello, welcome to another edition of Sin Labs podcast tagged Safe Blood Saves Lives. My name is Ucha Amadi. I am the lean manager in Sin Lab Nigeria with over five years of experience in clinical laboratory practice. I will be your host. Today we will be discussing transfusion transmissible infection. But first, let me introduce our guests. With me here is Dr. Ushikomaya. So Dr. Shikomaya is a consultant hematologist with special interest in blood transfusion. She obtained her medical degree from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, Oshun State, and trained as a consultant hematologist in Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja. She is a fellow of the West African College of Physicians, a fellow of National Postgraduate College of Medicine, Nigeria and has an advanced postgraduate diploma in hospital management from College of Medicine, Lagos State. She is presently pursuing her master's in public health from the University of Suffolk, Ipswich, United Kingdom. Dr. Oshikomaya has over 15 years experience in clinical laboratory practice in the public and private health sectors in Nigeria. She's presently serving in the Lagos State Blood Transfusion Service as the Executive Secretary. You're welcome, Dr. Shikamaya. We also have Sarah Stephen with us here. Sarah has a background in biomedical science from Pearson Institute of Higher Education, South Africa. She has over five years working experience as a medical laboratory scientist and is currently the site manager at SINLAB MCC Aja, one of a kind public-private partnership establishments between SINLAB and the Ministry of Health. The facility currently runs a fully operational blood bank service, which she effectively manages alongside routine laboratory test requests. You're welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Jane. Lastly, we have Dr. Anne Ogwinda. Dr. Anne is a senior lecturer at the University of Lagos and a consultant hematologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. She is currently the head of department of the Department of Hematology and Blood Transfusion, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, and acting head of department at the College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Her main areas of interest are hemato-oncology and transfusion medicine. Wow. Dr. Bena has keen interest in quality control management, and under her leadership, the Loose AIDS Prevention Initiative of Nigeria Clinic won the 2016 Nigeria Qual Award of Outstanding Performance. Wow, wow. wow. That's <laughs> quite, quite interesting. You're welcome to the show, Dr. Anne. Thank you. So, it's really amazing how we're all ladies here today. And trust me, it wasn't <laughs> planned. <laughs> but we're happy to have you here. Today, as I said, we will be talking about transfusion transmissible infection. Of course, as the name implies, it means those infections you can get through blood when one is receiving blood. So let's start with Dr. Anne. Dr. Anne, you work in the Department of Hematology and Blood Transfusion. As a doctor, I want to know what role do you play in blood donation and transfusion? Mm. So I think um, we, I will say we play a multiple role as hematologists. Because we see the patients that require the blood. Uh -huh. So we request for the blood. Uh -huh. We also manage the blood bank. And therefore, we prepare blood, safe blood for every patient in the hospital that requires blood. More so, we are actively involved in blood donation recruitment. Because if we don't recruit the blood, we don't have blood for the patients. Sure. So we are involved from vein to vein, as you say in blood transfusion. Wow. Right <laughs> from the person needing it until we get the appropriate donor to give to the patient that requires the blood donation. Wow, that's quite impressive. So talking about blood donation and blood donors, Dr. Oshukmaya, I'd like to ask, who is an eligible donor? So um, an eligible donor is anyone that um, is above the age of 18 in Nigeria. I mean, some okay. other places, the ages could be like 16. Um, also, there's a cost to that if there is a parental consent. You can decide to donate blood if you're above the age of 16. Um, anybody that um, has a weight greater than 50 kilograms, so there's also a clause to it, 
if you are between 45 and 50, a lower volume of blood can be collected from you. Anyone that has been able to have an assessment and has been seen to be duly fit um, can donate blood. Anyone that um, has a hemoglobin level above 12.5 kilograms, and 12.5 grams per deliver can also donate blood. So those are the people that are eligible to donate blood. Okay, so even it's safe to say that women too can donate. Yes, okay, yes, gender. yes. Women do donate wow. blood. Um, even right now, there's um, a present competition between two groups, okay. two Muslim groups. The females are competing with the males. Wow. To see who is going to donate more blood <laughs> in six months. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, so they just want to show, they are trying to show the world that females can donate blood. So okay. there is an ongoing competition between two Muslim groups right now. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. Yes, so please. how many times can this eligible donor donate blood in a year? So you can donate blood between three to four months every month, every year. So every three to four months, every okay, year you can donate blood. So months. that means that you can donate blood at least three to four times a year. Because we have some people that, and we'll come to that. <laughs> we'll come to that. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Anne, let me ask, how important is regular voluntary blood donation? Hmm. So, I think it's extremely important for two reasons. One, we need to have blood in the blood bank at every time. Because having blood ready is, is something we can't do without because you cannot predict when emergency is coming. Sure. When a woman who has had a normal labor suddenly starts bleeding, we didn't envisage that. Or you're going to walk and there's a road traffic accident as we had with the... Yeah. Um, the um, train the collision, exactly. bus. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. the yes. or war situation. Yes. 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 So yes. you cannot predict. And therefore you must have blood ready at every time. Yes. But you must also ensure that the blood you have ready at every time is safe blood. And the safest people who can donate are voluntary blood donors and that is why i mean that is the goal in blood banking that every donor should actually be a voluntary researchers multiple researchers have shown that they are safer than either the um, paid donor or the family replacement donors wow thank you so voluntary donors are the ones that are the, the safest yes so wow. when we say voluntary we're saying people who out Willingly. of their free sure. volition have sure made up their minds to donate. Wow. Okay. So I'd like to hear from Sarah. Okay, now we're saying that the ones that are voluntary, they actually give us the safest blood. So what types of samples do you require for their screening when somebody comes to donate? So what samples do you require to deem them okay. fit for donation? Okay, um, so um, when a blood, um, when anybody walks into the blood bank and says, I want to donate, so the first thing we do actually is to take their data and also ask them some questions. Because um, like Dr. Ann said, we are looking for safe blood. That's the ma major thing. So we ask them a couple of like screening tests, if they've maybe had malaria in the last, say maybe they've treated malaria in the last week or two, if they've been done they are on, currently on any medication or do they have any um, medical conditions that they are currently managing and a host of other tests as well. So depending on the um, how like how they answer the questions, then we'll now proceed to doing like the blood pressure check. Okay. So we'll check their blood pressure as well because we also, as much as we want to collect safe blood, we also don't want to do it at the detriment of anybody's health as well. Sure. So their health is also key. So we also check their blood pressure. After that, we now go to their hemoglobin level, like Dr. Shikomaya said. So once their um, HB level is above 12, that's 12 grams per DL, then they are um, usually, so there's a range for male and female as well. Yeah. So for female, usually 12 and above. For males, from 14 grams per DL and above. Okay, so from what you just said, blood sample is actually what you need. Uh, yes, apart yes, Apart from the blood yes, pressure you're yes, checking. Yes, apart from the pre-screening, yes. Okay. So from this, we can see that not only men, also women can donate mm -hmm. blood. And you have to be up to like 16 years to donate blood and your with HB parental level. consent okay with the parental there. consent but um generally 18 okay generally 18. right now so many um teenagers have an adult's body frame sure. and they are willing to do the right thing so if a 16 or 17 year old person comes to donate blood or offers to donate blood we do not just send them away we ask them to come with their parents okay yeah. and, and then they are becoming quite a lot now 
Another thing I picked out is it shouldn't exceed three to four times. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of this episode. We'll be right back. 